Welcome back, you guys. It's time for American Lunchbox Podcast. Woo! Can you hear the cheers from the crowd? Can you hear the cheers? Oh, you guys, speaking of crowds. The NFL can pipe them in. That's what I'm saying. I know, speaking right? Of crowds. But hold up, but hold on. But hold on. That's, a, that's a story that we'll have in just a second, because I know you guys have been watching football just as much as I have. So hold on for a second. First of all, let me introduce the, the gang. Now, for, for those of you all, this is episode nine. If you don't know who we are and what we are, just read the description. That's all. I mean, just read the description. That, down there, it will tell you all about who we are and what we're doing. But... But for now, I just want to introduce this guy right here because he's so special, and I love him with all my heart. Come on, guys, give it up for Chris. Hello. Woo. And then on this side over here, this guy right here, whom I Somewhere. spent so much quality time with, working mm. on many projects, gets on my damn nerves all the time, mm -hmm. but yet still have much love. Namaste. Let's welcome Tim. Greetings and salutations. I, I made a promise to George before the uh, start of this show that I would not interrupt him during the introduction. So I would not he's say, so rude. I would not say something smart-ass about it. I almost did, but no. I, I gave him he's space. He's so rude. Every time, last week I started to sing and he interrupted me. The week before that, I start, it's, it's just rude. Go back to episode you know, uh, eight and seven and five. And look at all of them. And you'll find that this guy interrupts my, inter my, my intro. But anyway, hey guys, how you guys doing today? Very good. good. It's good to see you guys, of course. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been a week. So it's always good to see you guys, and just wanted to just catch up with you guys. Hey, how how you going? How you how are you doing, Chris? What's going on with you? Pretty good. My eyes are uh, undilating, if that or dedilating. I went to the uh, uh, my optometrist has switched over to one of those new fancy uh, imaging machines, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, 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 costs money, extra money for you to get your eyes images because they don't want to do dilation anymore. But apparently, it gets so much deeper in your eye, and they don't have to do that to your eye any hmm. anymore. But, but I'm very cheap and paranoid. So I said, listen, does that stuff stay on your computer system? They said, yeah. I said, well, we, we don't know what the future of this is. Like, look at 23andMe and all this stuff. Like, some ad agency just bought them out and in the past. and said, oh, well, well, that will never be used against you or for you. You know, we don't know what's going to become our fingerprint in the future. So I called up this new place. I said, listen, my old optometrist won't give me uh, dilation. Will you do it? They said, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it for free. I said, you're speaking my language. <laughs> Cheap, but and paranoid. Yeah. Chris, Incredible. Chris, and that happened you. today? Yeah. So oh, my okay. eyes so are just, um, thank you. My eyes are just, I, I'm just coming back into focus now. Yeah. I thought you had, I thought you had smoked a blunt or something before, you know, <laughs> I, but your eyes, but your eyes look good. Okay. All right. Good. What about you, Tim? What's going on with you? How did your week go this week? Oh, it's been, it's been, it's been long, man. We've, um, a lot, of, a lot of a lot of work has been really busy. Um, usually, I get at least like at least one day at work where I can just kind of relax and you know just kind of chill. It's just a normal day, but all, all every day at work this week has just been nonstop. But uh, luckily, this this weekend for me, um, I got to I got to relax a little bit, play a little bit on the piano, learn some new tunes, show some show some progression. So Tim, that part will was you cool. ever will you ever be man enough to show us something on the piano? Because uh, uh, the, ladies what? and gentlemen, I, I I've was... asked this dude to show us something, and he just every time. <laughs> You know, he pussyfoots out, and he tells us that he can't. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, what the fuck? Do you see what happened, ladies and gentlemen? You see what yeah. he does? Um... And we're going to keep rolling on this because this is exactly what we're talking about. Oh, the tech God. guy gives us all the tech problems. Right. <laughs> now, we're, we're live. We're live. And all of a sudden, now, this dude Just completely... disappears. And... I mean, does does black screens matter now? Does black screens matter? Is this what this Tim? Is this what this is about? Black it's something, man. I don't know what it is. Hold on. Is I'm this black screen buttons. matters, Tim? What the hell is going on? Uh, I'm pushing oh. buttons. Oh see my! What happens. Because I know how I know how much Tim prides himself on oh technical God. things, so that's why this is extra hilarious. Oh, there we go. Uh, there oh, he is. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tim. Oh. Please don't edit that out. Please that's, leave that I, in. The show. I will leave that in. Uh, I mean, tease. Black screens matter, Black Tim. Screen Black screens matter. matter. Exactly. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I, I actually did learn something really quick on the piano uh, just today, actually. It was kind of cool. Did you learn anything about Skype right about now? No, no, no. <laughs> actually, it's very relevant. Um, I, I, I kind of knew this, but I didn't. But it was, um, I found out that um, in movies, um, many of you probably, Chris, you probably know this, that um, 
music is plays a big part in it in, in movies and telling a story and telling. Um, uh, why would I know that? I, I, why would I know that? Oh, I said Chris would know that. I don't know about. I don't know what. Oh, George, well, I, would know I don't that. watch movies. I, I'm not in the right. entertainment business. Have right. I not worked next to you for the last almost ten years? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Okay, Chris. Do, uh, all right, you're right. Podcast over. This dude right here, man. I don't know what. What, what? you've been smoking a blunt? That's what it is. You've been smoking a blunt. Not uh, Tim, not Chris. Yeah, probably. But uh, anyway, the what the what the one song I learned is like it's like four notes and it's it's meant to symbolize death in the movies. Uh, it's it's an old like um, funeral song back in like the 1700s or something. But when I heard it, I go, oh my god, I've heard this in so many movies. It's insane. And it's just it's a very simple tune. It just goes, and that's it. Sounds familiar. It does sound familiar. familiar. It has been. Uh, uh, I'll put some. I'll put some lyrics to it. Maybe maybe you've heard it. Making Christmas. But it symbolizes death. If you ever hear that theme going off, you know, before somebody's, uh, before, you know, when they introduce somebody, you know, either they're going to be killed or they're going to kill somebody. So well, that, well, keep, well, keeping, cool. that, keeping that theme, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm just wondering real quick, is, is our recording killed or are we still, is our, our technical stuff back to rolling? No, we're still rolling. We're good. We're still okay. rolling. We're, yeah, we're not doing our podcast. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. What would be the rebirth? What would be the sound of rebirth? <laughs> I don't know, play it backwards. Get this, get this uh, train back on the rails here. <laughs> well, we're back on the rails. We're back on the rails. But but keep but keeping but keeping yeah. with that whole idea of of that uh, the, the death scene, guys. We reported very early on, I believe, in episode two of this podcast, that we did not believe, or we all had reservations about how sports were going to eventually come back in the COVID because of what is going on. But for some odd reason. Um, you know, we have been able, and I, and I, and I don't know if it's because of the timing, because, you know, the NBA started and then now the NFL, so the NFL looks like it's a little more smooth than what the, the, what the, what the NBA went through and then baseball. But right now, guys, we have four, five, six sports going on right now. Mm -hmm. And football started this weekend. And I, you know, I didn't watch all the games, you know, but I did watch how you know, uh, was that uh, the Chiefs just manhandled Texans? And they looked like they almost like they were playing a high school team after the first after the what first four plays. It looked like they were playing a high school team, and and that's not to say anything about. I know they're professionals, but they got their asses whipped. But what about the the fact that the camera work? You couldn't see any of the crowd. They made up the point not to show how many people were in the stadium because they didn't want any bad reports. Uh, the, the, I heard the announcer say that there are about 17,000 people, which makes it about, up to, yeah, but we couldn't, there's no evidence on, on screen. What do you guys think about how they have kind of manipulated this with football? I'm used to it because uh, I, I love football. So I, I was following the XFL before they got the plug pulled on it because of COVID. Uh, but also there's high school and uh, college games that get shot that way too. And it's just that you have to adjust for whatever your environment at the moment is. If you got a big stadium, or there's sometimes where you got a stadium that's only half full, so then you shoot it in a way that right as the fans start to disappear, that's the top edge of the camera. Um, I thought it was cool that they had some fans there because they were loud, much like some of those XFL games. The fans that were there were roaring, roaring and raucous. That was kind of cool that they just let. Well, how could in. you tell? The, how could you tell the difference between what they were pumping in? Because they were pumping in sound too, right? And what the crowds I, were. How could you tell the difference? I guess I could, and I mean, it's from. I think you could feel when a crowd is going nuts versus the pumping, which is like, like no matter what yeah. happens, it's just. I know. I know. It wasn't know. as bad. As, I didn't think it was as bad as a laugh track, but it was. It was just something about it was just a little off, and you and and you knew. I was watching the uh, the Rams game, and of course they were showing lots of shots of the inside of the stadium because it's a new four bazillion dollar stadium. So they were showing all. They were showing it completely empty, but they wanted to show all the sights and sounds of it, and uh, so you could tell there was nobody there, and it was painfully obvious when they were piping in the audio that it was just. Something here is it isn't right. I mean, it was good to see football. I actually enjoyed it because it was like something in my house other than MSDNC. I was like, yes, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> Tim, Tim, don't get kicked off this podcast. Tim, Tim, <laughs> Tim, stop it, stop it. Don't don't get don't do I it. actually I actually agree with probably most of what they say, but it's just it's it's just nonstop in my house. That's that it's always on. Well, the reason that a lot of people are turning off sports is because that nonstop uh, messaging of uh, your favorite or uh, your household's favorite channel is uh, seeping into uh, football. Right, right. 
and all the other sports. And besides the competition of there just being multiple things to watch at once, which might also be hurting the ratings of all of them simultaneously. Hmm. The, there's a lot of reasons that it's going down, but the ratings were down. Uh, besides the Brady game, I think the ratings were down like 20%, <laughs> something yes. ridiculous. Compared to what, though? I mean, how last, could you last compare? Year. But, but last year, what we didn't have the COVID. We didn't have all no, and, and, and on top of that, you got to remember, if it's not marketed a certain kind of way, people are not even paying attention to it because there's so much noise and already true, in the marketplace. Yeah. And people I agree. And I totally the TV. And George, I totally agree so with you on that. So much piped in noise. Yeah. And George, I totally agree with you on that because I we were watching the uh, the first game. I think it was uh, Thursday night or something. And we we're sitting there watching. I go, was there any promotion for this? I we saw nothing. And we're big football fans in this house, and we're like, God, I didn't even realize there was going to be a game on. So maybe because it was maybe because there wasn't any pregame this year. I mean, that could be a lot of it, but yeah, there was nothing. Yeah, that's how this year has gone. There's been so many little things. Like, look, we were talking about your VR stuff. A Half Life game mm-hmm. came out this year. What? <laughs> like, no one. I didn't know. I'm a huge fan of that. Like, there's so many things that I realized. The host of one of my favorite shows left the show months ago. I didn't realize until like a week or two ago. Right. It's just that's been this year. It's just one thing after the other. Yeah, and that goes to show you how diluted and how saturated things have gotten with this whole COVID to the point now that people are just tuning out. Now, so to to say that the ratings are low doesn't. I mean, everything in this year has an asterisk next to it. Yeah, that's true. No matter what, even this election that's coming up, everything is going to have an asterisk because there's something there. There's something about this that's diff- has been different than we've ever seen. So when I think about what I saw with the sports this week, and um, and I, but 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 listen, these guys played their asses off. They were they were all you can tell that they had pre training oh, yeah. yeah. and they look professional. Uh, uh, unlike when the when the NBA started, they looked like a whole bunch of college teams. Mm-hmm. Um, but but football, football stayed in shape. Yeah, and they and they knew, you know. And um, and, and, and there's a lot of other things that are going on with NFL in regards to what, what what the whole you know look of you know this lack of acknowledgement of the of the times that we're in. They're staying politically out of all of the all of the are stuff. They? Well, what did you see? Well, they, they let you put, like, names on the back of your helmet of whatever. Okay. Like, George, but they weren't walking George around with, with, with – but they didn't walk around with shirts on. There no, was no, no, there was, no, that wasn't there were no. There were no uh, there were no insignias on the on the field. They, there, there, was, let, uh, there was in the end zone, slogans. they have end racism in, in the end zone. Okay. Or, well, or it you, takes all of us or something like that. I saw a few slogans which, thrown around. <laughs> sure. I mean, that, Bro, that could have worked. I think everyone agrees. That – yeah, exactly. That that's not a that's not a position. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the problem statement. with the NFL. The NFL is just reactionary to whatever exactly. crisis they're dealing with. Just that's right my now. point. Yeah. That's my point. They don't take a stance. All they do <laughs> is all they do is they do just enough, just enough to say that they are acknowledging, but they don't take a position. Right. And because there, of, yeah. and because of that, you know, uh, uh, I think again they're going to be looked at as the. Uh, well, I, mean, I can't say. I'm not even going to say that. Right now, I'm just enjoying the sports. I'm going right. to leave George, the politics out of yeah. it. I, I just George, I don't to... think, with, with not taking a stand, I agree with you in this, I don't think they could win either way. By, but by being tacit about it, they're going to lose the people who are looking for that little thing in the end zone to be mm-hmm. pissed about. And they're also going to lose the people who don't think they're going hard enough. That's so right. Football, which should be the most unified, was the most unifying thing in the country, is now getting, for the last couple of years, torn apart by this nonsense. I saw. Well, it's not, not that the underlying issues are nonsense, but the, yeah. the, the the culture war lines are a little nonsense. That's right. That's right. But, but really, I wanted to leave the politics out of this because honestly, yeah. I I really enjoyed watching same football. Sure, I know. <laughs> well, me too. I, I, I just I, I just wanted to say that for the record. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, George, George, real quick, you said yeah. take the politics out of football. Let me ask this question: Should they just take get rid of the national anthem altogether then? That way nobody uh, can protest me, yeah. it. Yeah. But that's just, but again, I, I, I just enjoy watching the game. Yeah, same you know, I enjoy being able to say to myself, wow, he's running fast versus <laughs> he's, he's a black man running fast. <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I could care. I just wanted to enjoy the game and right. have a good time. <laughs> why, why is that punt returner being chased by the LAPD? See, I, wow. I don't want to talk like that about this because this is a good thing for the American people. Yeah, it, it was it was a good thing that football gives us some kind of 
uh, leeway or some kind of way of getting away from all of the shit that's been going yep. on. And for folks who have really been waiting patiently, I, 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 which is like myself, I'm just happy that I can just watch a game. Yeah. I, I was know? watching the uh, Charger game and the uh, Chargers won by a field goal. And, um, and it was great. I, we were into it. The, the, the sound was perfect. It wasn't just all piped in audio and it wasn't in your face. And we were just into it. And it was just like, after a while, we're just like, it was a close game. They fought back to back. It was like, we could just sit there and enjoy it and not worry about the politics of it. And, it, and that was actually a nice, a nice release for a while. Or a nice yeah. And, it's, and, 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 and go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's actually a lot more trivial than what Tim was going for. Go, go on. Oh, well, in keeping in with, in keeping with the chargers and the Rams, because all of those are LA teams. Um, I, what has been going on in LA just in general, particularly with the fires, I, I'm I'm just glad that we didn't get these aerial shots that we're used to getting from the blimp from these football games. Because mm -hmm. you know, if you look at some of the pictures up in San Francisco, I mean, it almost reminds you of a of a DC story of a little baby on a planet, and the planet is being torn apart with war. And a little child is put into a capsule and it is thrown out into space, hoping to bring back, you know, that story. Yeah, you, you've heard this story before, but it reminds me of that place that he was, that he lived because the sky has been crazy red. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it's, it's like a beautiful disaster. I've been waking up and seeing pink light coming through the window. Uh, you know, I'm following all the COVID rules, but the one nice thing about it is you're encouraged to go outside for a couple hours a day. But when you do, you come back feeling like you smoke cigarettes. <laughs> oh, the sunsets it, have been gorgeous, you know. I'll give it that, but you know, yeah. it's it's terrible for people that are uh, that are they're losing their homes and they're having to evacuate and they're under these uh, terrible conditions. George, it reminded when you say DC, it actually reminded me of the end of uh, some of the Ghostbusters films when the sky would turn. Right. Close. Oh yes. <laughs> and it, this is a horrible thought. I, I know people died, but in my head, I just heard from I just heard the the thing about Vigo. <laughs> you know, when he laid there, I am Vigo. disemboweled and beheaded. That he said that death was but a door and time was but a passage, and he'll be back. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm just like with the way this year is going, I wouldn't be surprised if Vigo. <laughs> came back at this very moment <clears throat> one thing after the other up in san francisco they were pulling up pictures because the fire obviously has gone to oregon they're having their problems now and washington state i mean this this fire has this, has moved not only across uh states but now obviously we've lost lives uh property and, and be mindful you know um i have a i have a house in in the Angeles National Forest and, and uh, you know, dealing with ash and having to wake up and it looks like fog, but it's really smoke. Right. It's really, it's really smoke. And uh, waking up with the stench of the smell of the smoke and, and, and not knowing if it's animals that are or if it's foliage, or, I mean, it's like, what is burning? You don't, cause you, the smell is not, it's, it's really ominous, you know? And it's, it's horrible uh, when you uh, think about what the, the, the ramifications are with this uh, and homes and, and lives and stuff. So we, we are in Los Angeles coming out of that now, uh, but, it, but we can still see the 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 aftermath is this it's just horrible it's really bad and my, of course our hearts and prayers goes out there just another thing to remind me i gotta watch football right you know just what, another I, thing yeah i did one i did make one uh instantly bad prediction i thought that with no crowd there that no kicker would miss a kick all season but mm. unfortunately, that the rookie from the Bills missed two in a row. Felt <laughs> <laughs> so bad for that. <laughs> I mean, and they were way off. Yeah. To the point where the, was, I was looking at ESPN and they slowed it down. They were like, "Look how far this thing is off!" Like, dude, I mean, did, have you ever kicked a punt before? And like, I mean, 
who uh, it was horrible man but yeah 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 yeah, yeah it was sometimes uh, it was, it's harder to do it when there is no pressure and it's like you're thinking oh you know easy shot i got i can i can make this and you know sometimes you do better under pressure than than you do when, there, when there's nothing when there's no crowds the worst hit i ever took in uh, uh playing football i was playing punter and you know when you're punting you got to kick real high and your leg ends up above your head right. well i don't know what happened if the O-line didn't block because they knew I was back there or they just got broken through or what. But I saw about three guys coming for me. I said, all right, here we go. Step, step, kick. My leg was up like this. At that moment, all the guys got to me. Ouch. They caught me while my leg was over my head. And I remember being driven backwards, leg next to head. And I got planted in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So I guess what I'm saying is that when you mess up in a kicking role, it's ultra humiliating. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember the I remember the one and only time I played football um, when I was a young boy. Uh, I'm talking about as a not as a uh, recreational, but it actually as an organized team. I was uh, I, I believe I was in the fifth grade, and my mom, uh, I, I, I protested that I wanted to play football. And be mindful, I've always been. Uh, a pretty small dude, you know, as far as weight is concerned. I'm tall, but I'm, but I'm, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of m uh, muscle mass or, or or fatty tissue around my my bones. You can you can have so, all of my, you can have all of mine. That's all I wish care. I could. I right. wish I could, Tim. Uh, but uh, but I was determined to I was determined to be on the team, and I went out for the first practice, the first literally the first day of practice, and it was all the parents were out there, and my mom drop me off and so as a result <clears throat> you know i'm she puts me in the coach's hands blah 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 blah. and so uh keep in mind you know there's a lot of other kids out there and we are now being issued what would be our helmets and our pads and all of this stuff right so as a way of proving myself even at what eight years old or something seven or eight years old as a way of proving myself i decided it would be a good idea to prove to my team that i could take a hit so i decided to go heads up in a position uh with no helmet with a guy with a helmet oh no yeah yeah so i get down there and mind you we're doing this amongst ourselves this is not organized the coach is not there we're just you know we're just kids out there with this all this new equipment on you know and so uh, the guy gets down in position. I get down into position and somebody order, you know, another kid says, okay, ready. And all I remember, the last thing I remember is actually hearing the numbers. That was the last thing I remember. And then I woke up and my mom was there. Now, mind you, the story started with my mom dropped me off. <laughs> right. My mom dropped, this was pre-cell phone. This was pre-cell phone, right? So, you know, uh, I woke up and my mom was there and, uh, and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't quite get it together. What had happened, you know, because, uh, uh, but we all know what happened. The guy charged me, knocked me out, sat there. I was knocked out. And that was the last day, my friends, I had a helmet, a pad, some pads on. And that was the last day my mother allowed me to play football, organ, you know, in an organized way. So that's why that's my football story. Well, that's the risk of uh, <laughs> sorry about that. That's that's the risk of uh, football becoming hmm. football might in the future become like boxing, where it's just a way for the poorest of the poor to get out of the hood. And the national sport might veer closer to a baseball, soccer type of sport. Yeah, I'm assuming you're saying this because of the whole concussion thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So because yeah. what what would you if you had a kid right now that was football age, would you put him in there? I don't know. I have four girls. Uh, so uh, I, so I don't they, know. they can, I, they I know can play, that, they can play football. football. I know that I, I, I know that football is a rite of passage for young boys. You know, regardless of where they live or economics, I know that men, fathers, want their boys to play sports versus playing, you know, uh, a violin. So, which I don't have a problem with either. So I know that some, a lot of fathers enjoy the idea of watching or wanting, especially if they have themselves a 
a uh, a oh, a athletic background for sure, they will definitely want their sons to follow in their footsteps in some way. At least yeah. at least participate. I mean, I did some football inboxing, and unless my kid was begging me to do it, I don't think I could. I, I don't think I could hype them up into doing it. Mm. I might hype them up into playing baseball. But I, but 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 or to, basketball. Su- suffice to say, you, uh, Tim. I don't I don't I don't know how you feel about this. Uh, but uh, but Chris, you are single, with uh, and uh, uh, when, whenever you decide, and Lord knows your mother and I are both waiting for this to happen. <laughs> what, sorry, we don't whenever have to you go. Decide, <laughs> whenever what, you what I'm getting at, dude, is that even if I had a nephew, uh, even but, if I had a nephew decide, or something, you, I wouldn't I, I, go there. But you you. I think you're. I think you're cutting me off on purpose. I'm sorry. You? Yeah, I, I think that's what. Whenever you decide, yeah. Again, uh, what do you? What would you do with your child, your son? Would you allow him to play football? Well, well, what I'm saying is that even if I was doing a mentorship Big Brother program, unless the kid was super into football, I don't think I'd ever take steps at this point to put a young man in football pads or in boxing gloves. Hmm. And I love both of the sports. And I watch both of the sports, but I don't think I could, in good conscience, push for that. I, 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 I would, I would push for them to play sports, uh, and learn violin, whatever. But I would push for them to maybe go baseball. Hmm. Just, I mean, just, the would... more and more we learn about this, we're, this is just such uncharted territory. The more you learn about brain injuries, they, they don't recover. I have tons of sports injuries. When I go back east, when it's humid, I feel all of them. But they kind of recover, especially out here. That's why I like being out here, part of it. But with a brain injury, there's no recovery. Now, what's the other reasons? The women in the weed? Something like that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's, the that's... weather. You know, whenever I check my app, my weather app and it says smoky, I'm like, yeah, nice. <laughs> That's, that's, what about that's 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 you, Tim? I, I what mean, about I, you? I, I think Chris's comments are interesting about about football because I mean, honestly, I before he mentioned the concussion thing about football, I would have no problem with it if, if I had a kid um, joining sports or whatever. I'd encourage it if they were if they were to do it. I wouldn't push them. I, I don't. I played I played little league and all that when I was a kid, but uh, and I wasn't great at it, but I was okay. Um, so you know, I totally encourage that. I even did a little uh, uh, mixed martial arts there for a little while, um, but you know, I I. I I don't want to say I suffered a few injuries, but I, I had a few sore ribs a few times. So it's it, there's definitely a risk no matter what. My uh, my brother played ice hockey for a while too, and they they make you sign a waiver. There's some insurance that goes along with that. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a risk. But I think I think I think the I think the benefit outweighs the risk. Um, I think you just have to be careful. And just make sure that you have you know a good league and good coaches that that take care of their people and don't push things and and don't take unnecessary risks. But I mean other than that, I think it's I, I think sports is fine even if it is even well, if it's got a little bit of risk to it. You bring up a good point. Like my experience with these uh, sports was someone screaming at you to go right. harder and don't be a pussy. But right. and that was generally the way that it was back then. And I don't think that is the case now. So yeah. um, you, that is a good point. Yeah, insurance rates are too it, high. Can't 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 afford the liability. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, th- that's this is an interesting topic because um, after understanding. You know, uh, like I said, this whole concussion thing and and seeing obviously what the what the ramifications are for the, the pounding of the body, the brain, all of what could go wrong. Uh, but again, to what, at what cost? You know, at at, at what co- at what cost? So what what you have to uh, what we have to continue to talk about. What we have to continue to talk about is being able to. Um, figure out ways to either make the sport safe, which I think they, they're doing. Um, you know, I think that they're doing. Because I don't think football is going anywhere, Chris. I, I just don't. I, I don't no, think football is going anywhere. No, probably not. They, they are making new helmets, like new helmets that are better for concussions. Okay. Or better to protect against concussions. Okay. Uh, they are making. There are new rules. Like the game has changed so much, you can't. If if a wide receiver is crossing the field now in the NFL, you, you just shoulder to shoulder hit him. That's a hit on a defenseless receiver, even if it's not a head to head hit. Right. Like there's oh. certain, there's going to be new rules on how you could tackle. It might look more like a blend. Uh, there might be some instances where in the future football looks like flag football, mm. and there's still some places where you allowed to hit. So 
I think they're trying to strip it back a little bit year by year, which pisses off the fans, but Thank ultimately you. would do what you're saying, which is keep the sport popular while also slight while also be able to say on paper, hey, this year we reduced the injuries by this right. point of a percentage. Which is important. You know, uh, you you can tell you can, you can tell those old guys uh, who play football. You can tell how they walk. I mean, those those old guys who you know, who, who, you know, those injuries that were that they used to just wrap tape and just go right back out there. You know, um, so those days thankfully are gone from our grandfathers and. And, and now when we're looking forward to our children, we can say, hey, okay, there's something safer and still yet entertaining about this whole football idea. Now, uh, okay, all right, so look, Chris, do you have a rant for us this week? What's going on hmm. with the rant of the week? I do, I have a rant of a week, but it's more of an observation of the week. Okay, well, fair enough, let's, let's hear oh. it. Okay, my observation is about um, video games and the different generations. Now, we were speaking of the different generations in terms of football. But I have a theory. It's more of an observation, and I want to see what the fans, the, the viewers think as well. Are, were the, obviously, technology changes, and that allows for new types of uh, 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 in, uh, IPs, right? Intellectual properties and um, products. But do the games that get made influence that generation, or are those games um, that sell a sign of what that generation might be into? So hmm. let me give you some examples or some observations. Um, and if I look like I'm squinting uh, as I read off this card, it's because I <laughs> had my pupils dilated. So sorry about that. Okay. We have the boomer generation and the late, I would say late generation X. Uh, that was the arcade generation, right? So you had things like Space Invaders. And you had Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man. And most of those things due to the technology were confined to a single screen, a single box, right? So there was a lot of repetitive gameplay, and it was very skill-based, so it was based on performance. And the goal there was to get a high score or to kill them all, all right? Then we had my generation, the millennials and some of the younger generation Z, and around that time, the Nintendo came out. So you had things like Mario and Zelda, and those were a little more story-infused, and they were quest-based, right? So it had timers, but there was no high score. There was high scores, but no one cared or no one thought about that, right? So the, the goals there were to reach the goal or to solve a puzzle, okay? Then we have the younger generation. We have Generation Z. And if you see some of the things they grew up playing, it was Minecraft and Call of Duty. Now, those two things are extreme differences. So what I see there is a decline of story, but the rise of internet interactivity and socialization or anti-socialization where you have a situation where uh, people were online with strangers talking so on one hand that's like team building but on the other hand when you have two ten-year-olds shooting each other in the head virtually and calling each other the n-word that's quite anti-social um, so you had games like Minecraft which are completely goalless there is the goal is there is no goal in a lot of cases you're kind of just wandering around and you had games like Call of Duty which were create were trigger happy and based on who has the quickest reaction jump 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 now based on everything i just said is it any wonder of the three generations i mentioned the older generation still home holds the lion's share of our economic pie there's a capitalistic grab and hold and be the best sort of mentality from that generation my generation the millennials the dreamer types have set money aside in many cases and have made choices based on what would make their life better or what would make the world a better place. While the younger generation is triggered, aimless, and at times willing to be the most reactionary to burn it all down to the ground. And that is my observation of the week. Wow, what a great analogy, nice. and how you correlated all of those video games with generational spaces, as well as what will be their reactionary outcomes, uh, and how they think, and how, and what obviously you have evidence to show. Uh, yeah, they, is, beca they become a product of the time, that's for sure. 
Absolutely, they become a product of the time. But more importantly, they be also become a product themselves. In, in the whole scheme of this, this would not work unless they, you know, both the parents of Generation X would buy this for their children. You see, so there's some economic things involved in this as well. So we are providing, as, as parents of these generations, we're providing the, these video experiences as well. You bring up a very interesting mm. point there. Here's one more thing, now that I think about it. The arcade generation was used to going out and being very social. And I think that That's maintains right. as well today. In, in particular, I think in some ways they're one of the hardest hit by COVID because they're used to being out and about and meeting people. My generation of the indoors with no internet connection growing up is probably the most fine with this. Because now that we're stuck inside, there's Netflix and stuff like that. The younger generation is the social media generation. So I think it, the way that you meet and socialize might even have something to do with this. Now, now the question I have, which I don't know, is are people the products of the, of the things they grew up playing? Or were those things, did those things get hot for those generations because that's what sold to the specific traits of that generation? Uh, and and is, does that say something more about the generation or that the, the media that could influence that generation? What do you think? That's a good question. I, I, I would, the only way I could think about that is to go back one more generation. What did the generation before my generation have? That, and uh, I would say that they were deeply influenced by the media, which was music, dance, uh, things of that nature. And they were deeply influenced by the lyrics of songs, by the, by, the, by the movements. We talk about there will never be another Woodstock uh, there will never be uh, a, a, another um, uh, e e events events like what we had back in the 70s the, and early 80s that move that technology, what they had forward. So I would my answer would be yes, it's the the tools that will and of course they have to be those tools have to be um, have to be what do you call it? They, they, they have to be embraced. The generation has to embrace the tool because obviously there's many failures in this generation as well as things that came out and dropped and fall off and came, and, you know, but the ones that the technologies that were actually embraced and taken did, I believe, have the, the um, whether it be a latent effect or a true effect to how we socialize, how, uh, especially during this time with the, with the COVID, what these, what these three generations how these generations are suffering in different ways. I definitely believe that the technology um, was the catalyst to that. Yeah, and, and, and look at VR that, I, that I've just recently gotten into. It's It's been a long time coming. VR has been around since maybe I think some in the 50s in, in some cases. But uh, like one of the earliest examples was with Nintendo in their... Uh, I think it was like VR Boy or something like that. Oh, Virtual Boy. A Virtual Boy, boy that like, crashed because the technology just wasn't there and it was cheap and it was just a cheap knockoff. And and then slowly, you know, slowly the technology got better. And I think it's, um, and, I, and of course VR is really great now because it, it encourages people not to be social, encourages people to stay where they're at, stay at home because you can't use the thing outside. Uh, so it's actually it it, 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 it it has become kind of a product of the time, but there's a lot of different variations of VR. It can be used for a lot of different things. And, you know, I, I've used it for, for, for being able to do some VR exercising because, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm a product of that. Maybe it, that's a thing, too, with me is that, you know, I don't really love going to the gym. I don't love going, you know, I like going outside, but I can't go outside right now. So I think, I think that's one reason VR is really is being is being very popular right now. Well, Tim, I would say that VR is a niche thing, and, and no offense when I say this to you, I think you are kind of a niche person in the regards of science and in regards of technology. And because of my own uh, insecurities, people like you I'm, kind of scare me a little, honestly, uh, because I see you as such an early adopter to things like AR, AI and VR that you'd be the guy that would be like, yeah, human hybrid, human and... and, and and Android hybrids, I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. want to, yeah, I want to like, watch my. I see you as the first step of Cyberdyne. No offense, Tim. Yeah, I have AI wash my dishes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Alexa, Send them over. Alexa, yeah, she's listening, but she's cool. Listen to her. She got a sweet voice. Uh, hey, don't crumb, don't hey, crumb man. Said, I got one of those. She says she's not. She says she's not listening. She, she really isn't. Yeah, yeah. I, sometimes I'll, I'll ask her, "Did you hear what I just said?" And I'll wait. Mm -hmm. 
But then sometimes she'll ask me something and I say nothing. Oh yeah. She's done I, I that. have not said anything and she'll say <laughs> and I say, What see? So I don't I don't know she about she this. Hears stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah, this is turning into a sci fi movie at your house, George. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, hey guys. As much as I love you, it's been a great show. We've yeah. we've gotten some good stuff out. You know, what about the last part? Of course, the most famous of all, the American Lunchbox podcast shout outs. Give them to me, guys. What do you guys have for me this week? Who are you shouting out? I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to go with this one. Shout out to all the people uh, up in Northern California and, and surrounding areas um, who are affected by the fires and have lost their uh, homes. Big shout, um, out. big shout out to them. Uh, I can't even imagine what it's like to lose, lose everything. Uh, we had, at the start of COVID in, in March, we had our neighbor's garage go up in flames and with three in the morning. And I'm waking up and I'm just hearing my neighbors pounding on my door and, you know, I'm looking out the backyard and it's on fire. So luckily everything was fine, but it's like, when I, when I see the fires out there right now that are burning out of control, it's just, I, I have, I have huge, huge sympathy for that. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Chris? Shout out uh, to you. Shout out to um, some of my number one homies, Kyle, Raul, and KJ, a.k.a. Keanu, <laughs> who have uh, started a podcast of their own. Oh. It's called, yeah, it's called Honey Bunches of Goats, G-O-A-T-S. And they're sports fanatics, primarily boxing, but I think they also cover uh, football and um, basketball. And um, just three guys from Queens shooting the shit, real talk. Um, If that's not enough to entice you to the show, you should know that Kyle is a boxing trainer. And about 10 years ago, I miscalculated him due to his weight. And we had a boxing match that I didn't prepare for. And he, on camera beat the uh, ever loving shit out of me. <laughs> so if that's not enough, we got to get the footage of that. Link? Where's that, that link? That camp. We got to get the footage of that, man. Pay-per-view. That's a that's American Lunchbox pay-per-view uh, uh, <laughs> opportunity right there. But yeah, it's Honey Bunches of Goats and uh they're great guys and I love those guys and uh and they're kind of on the same trajectory as us. I think they're on like F8 or something like that. So oh, they're sweet. our competition. That's sweet. That's sweet. Well, listen. Listen. Big ups to those guys. And also, obviously, to those who have been suffering, uh, our heart goes out to you up there, up north. Uh, right. And um, shout outs for me. No shout outs for me today. No shout outs for me today, guys. Yeah. I'm, we're going to end it just like that. You know, we're going to take your two shout outs and we're going to head on out of here. You know, uh, it's been episode nine, nine. for American nine? Lunchbox. Nine. 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 Episode nine for American Lunchbox podcast, guys. We're out of here. Peace. See ya. Stay safe.